Grandma's Kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and a singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Grandma's kitchen. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Grandma's kitchen. Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons, and welcome, and thank you for tuning in once again. There's so many wonderful, faithful people that <laughs> join me every week in my humble baking show, I guess, and uh, today is uh, going to be a different uh, day for me is because this lemon loaf that I'm making today I only made for the very first time earlier this week. And the reason for that is uh, the kids and uh, my husband weren't really big fans of, of anything lemon, although we like, I love lemon pie, and I make lemon pie and whatever, but lemon loaf was just not on the agenda. But because when I was going through some of my recipes, in my many recipe books that I have and enjoy, I found in there a recipe that uh, we got from John Allen Cameron. Now, for those of you who know John Allen, you know the legacy that he left. And uh, he was, uh, for anyone who doesn't know, he was a, a Celtic music artist. Uh, from our area. He lived between Port Hood and Glencoe Station, which is all about five kilometers from me. And his mom and uh, family, they lived in Model. And of course, he went off to Ontario and married. And um, sadly, he, uh, he passed away a few years ago. But he really did pave the, the way for Celtic music and our Celtic musicians and uh, fiddlers and guitarists and singers and he was a singer but he was an amazing guitar player and was just really noted for his ability on the 12 string guitar and playing uh, Scottish fiddle tunes on the guitar and so uh, he was a much loved uh, personality from here and we're very very proud of all that he accomplished so when I found the uh, the recipe I think I told some of you last week, but not everybody probably would have heard me, but way back in the mid-90s, uh, our daughter, our twin daughters, were lamenting that they didn't have a summer job and all of that. And so um, they were like 14 or 15 at that time. And so I said, well, let's do a cookbook of Inverness County personalities. Now Inverness County, for those who don't know, is pretty much the west side of Cape Breton Island along the coast. And, um, you know, we have wonderful musicians set from here. And so we decided we would accumulate all those recipes, reach out to these musicians and, and you know, radio hosts and anybody who had made an impact in their community or in the county and ask them for two or three favorite recipes and uh, a picture and a story to go along with it. So anyway, lots of them responded uh, with just that and uh, we put it together in a book and the girls sold it and they got the money uh, from that. And uh, Jan Allen was one of the ones that we reached out to because formerly being from here and all the the wonderful things that he had done. And that was his music at the beginning of the show, if you don't, uh, if you didn't recognize that. But um, I found this letter that he had written to the girls after uh, it was published, the, the rest of the book had been published. And so 
Uh, in it, he, he commented uh, that he was so sorry that he missed the deadline, but he was on tour at that time and wasn't able to fulfill uh, and fill in the recipe page that we had sent him. And he said it'll be for volume two, but of course, once we did the initial order, we didn't uh, sell them again. It was plenty because we come from a smaller area. And uh, so I thought, my goodness, and I was just remembering all the things that, uh, that he accomplished, and I thought, this recipe, I need to share this. And especially because, you know, uh, he said that he got it in, in his introduction it, uh, on paper on the recipe he said that he got it way back when from Dinah Shore. I don't know if any of you would remember Dinah Shore. She was a singer from the US and had you know many hits oh my gosh um, one of the ones oh let me think here I, I'm just gonna sing a little ditty Daisy Daisy give me your answer true I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage, but you'll look sweet upon the seat of a bicycle built for two. I'm sure some of you will remember that. That was a very poor, I started off wrong, but anyway, that was the song, if you remember that. I don't know if it was her song, but she recorded it, and I can still hear her singing that, and it's probably on YouTube. So anyway, I thought, because of Jan Allen and because of Dinah Shore, I think I should try this recipe. And it turned out really good. It makes three loaves. So we're going to do that right now. And I am going to stop uh, the live feed after we get it in the oven. And we'll resume, you know, it takes an hour to bake. We'll resume a little bit before that hour to make the, the glaze that goes on top because we have to put the glaze on uh, while it's hot. And then we'll have a little visit and a cup of tea. So first things first, I'm going to set my oven to 350 and you do the same. And I'm gonna wash my hands, okay? saying that there is an echo and you know what I can't do a darn thing about that because I don't know how to and I apologize I'm using this new system called OBS system software and it's on my laptop and once this COVID thing is over I think I'll still continue to do these things and by then I'll have the children around who know what to do and will fix all of this. So I'm sorry, but I'll keep talking loud and pray that it's not uh, not too loud or not too muffled or echoey. Okay, we're going to have to keep on going. And uh, very first thing, uh, it's I have my recipe right here. <clears throat> it's one cup of butter plus two tablespoons. So I actually did pre-measure that because I took it out uh, so that it would be kind of soft. Now, I'm gonna say here, some of you have food processors, and if you do, Janelle says in, in the recipe, dump everything in together. Dump it all in together and, and put it in your food processor. And one of these days, I'm gonna get myself one of those things because everybody who sometimes are sending me little pictures and stuff like that, and I said, oh my God, it looks so easy even with the dough. So anyway, I'm going to do it with an electric beater or you can do it by hand. Whatever you have, use that. So, but I'm going to mix it after every addition because I'm doing it in this way. So, 
one cup of butter plus two tablespoons. And if you didn't soften it, I'm assuming any time you have a recipe that I'm giving you, then you're going to be adding butter, that you will have taken your butter out because you can't use cold butter, okay, for any recipe that I know of anyway. So, all right. So I'm going to put the, the uh, beater on that. And my son says to put it on silent while I'm beating up the butter and anything else. So I'm going to try to do that. Mix up your butter, and now you're going to add three cups of white sugar. Again, I'm going to tell you this. This, when I made this recipe, I had no idea how many loaves it was going to make. But when I put it together, it made three loaves. So, uh, you know, all of you great mathematicians and great bakers that are online and watching, if you only want to make one loaf, just divide everything by three, and you can... You can manage that, and uh, or make them give, keep one, give two away. That would be nice. Somebody would appreciate that. I know when I made three this week, I kept one, and I have a little piece of it left that I'm going to have with my tea when I have tea with you later. So, and I gave the other two away. One I gave. Who did I give it to? I gave it to the post office staff. They've been so great with me putting out the apron orders and. Trying to pack it up right. And uh, the other one I gave to my hairdresser. I saw her on Friday and my God, it was great. Thank you, Denise, if you're watching. So this uh, again uh, is for um, the three loaves. So I'm putting in three cups of white sugar. I have a half cup measure here, so I'll do six of these. Mix three. Okay, we're going to mix that again. Hold on. Anybody who is using a food processor, I should have given you all the, the, the ingredient list. So the ingredient list is, has been posted by my daughter, Tammy, because I sent it to her today. But I'm just going to run over the, the ingredients. They are one cup of butter plus two tablespoons of, uh, uh, plus two tablespoons, that's softened butter, three cups of white sugar, six eggs, one and a half cups of milk, four and a half cups of flour, one and a half tablespoons of baking powder and one and a half teaspoons of salt. And then we're going to do the rind, um, the, the lemon, up the lemons, okay? So now I'm going to add the six eggs all at the same time, okay? People were asking me where did I get this bowl that I use. This bowl, it's a Tupperware bowl. I have two of them from years and years ago. They were Tupperware bowl. I think they're a 10 cup 
uh, they, they, they hold ten cups. And that is... Um, I looked on their website, and that's the closest one. It's not identical to this anymore, but it, it holds ten cups. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you on silent again. The things that I, I love. Well, I, I, I ordered a couple of things from, from Tammy. And uh, uh, just a minute, I think I have a piece of the foil off the butter. I do. Got it. But um, see this spatula? <laughs> It's got bumps and pieces out of it. Hopefully it never went into anything I picked. But uh, they have amazing spatulas. And I ordered a couple from my daughter. And her link is on my, uh, uh, my, my uh, website. So I can't wait. should get them maybe by the end of week, the week. But... They really do, uh, they're really good quality. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay, now uh, we're gonna add one and a half cups of milk. Now I'm I'm just not gonna beat up the milk because it'll be kind of just kind of swilly with the milk. So I'm just gonna mix it with the spatula. One and a half cups of milk. Now, I, um, I hope that uh, if the music is too loud, um, just say something and my, my daughter will send me a text and I'll get it here. That's how we do it. She's all the way out there in Fort McMurray. Thank you, Tammy. I know she's watching. God love her. She has four boys. And the oldest two are graduated, but the third fella, Jake, is graduating, and we were supposed to go to his uh, to his uh, graduation. We had planned that. We were going to go to that and fly out the first week of June because that's when it was going to be. It just wasn't to be. So now they're they're having that in Fort Mac, a few at a time. So congratulations, Jake. I love you, and I wish I could be there, and Grandpa wishes he could be there. Um, okay, the dry ingredients, I'm just going to put this aside, just going to check here. <laughs> here I thought I was putting it on silent, but I guess I wasn't, sorry guys. Uh, oh my god, this technology. It's all good. We're all just cooking, aren't we? <laughs> okay, I need four and a half cups of flour. I'm counting in my head. I swear to God, there's sometimes I don't remember. Was I at two or three? Okay, I know I'm at two. 
three, four, and a half. Oh my God, I love the music. It's so good. Um, now what else? One and a half tablespoons of baking powder. I just kind of eyeball the half a tablespoon. And uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt. that up stir it around before I add it to the wet ingredients and I know that usually sometimes when you're making a quick bread like this like a baking powder uh, the leavening is baking powder you would um, you know add a little bit of milk add a little bit of dry ingredients add a little bit of milk dry ingredients ending with the dry ingredients but we're he said put everything together in the food processor, so I'm just not going to bother doing that. And it turned out fine for me when I made it, so it's all right. And I want to say, say hi to all my kids again. They're so good to support me and everything else, and I know, and my grandson, some of them are watching me too. And Luke and Charlie up in Dartmouth and my daughter Krista and uh, my daughter Kelly in Herring Cove and her her and uh, Michael and sweet little Rosie Marie. She's a month old. So lots to celebrate. Okay, I'm going to do this. Sorry guys for the noise, but this is it. looking just lovely. Awesome. Okay, that part is done, but we have to add lemon zest. And it's the rind of three lemons. And <laughs> when I was posting the, the post for the ingredients, I said, you know, you need a zester. And it was after I posted it that I realized, mother of heavens, everybody was asking, what is a cedar? S-E-A-T-E-R. But they're darned autocorrect. I've been fooled on that so many times. And uh, it changed it to cedar from zester. This, uh, so yeah, so here's a zester for anybody 
who uses that, but it's got that fine little little holes, if you can see that. I guess I show it up there. Okay, and, uh, but most of the time I just use, you know, the, how you have these four-sided ones. I don't use the one, I don't use the one that's kind of really rough on the outside. I use this side. Can you see that? That's the side I use. And scrape it away until so all the, the peel is off. Ooh, it smells so good. And of course you're going to use that those these three lemons or the, uh, the glaze that we'll make just before we take it out of the oven. On this past Monday, we did a little interview, Mitchell and I. So many people just call him Mitch. He's Mitchell to me. I rarely call him Mitch. Uh, and when I'm upset with him, it's Mitchell Patrick. But you know how you do that? Not so much anymore. He's a married man, with three children of his own. But this past Monday, we did a little interview, Mitch and I, uh, to this group, uh, uh, a Larsh group from Sydney. And uh, there were five of them, and they were all in their own homes. Well, one, one young man was with his grandparents, I think, in Middle River. Oh, my God, they were so precious. They were so precious. They had all these questions to ask and what was favorite thing to bake and what, what was, um, uh, you know, what was your pets? Did you have a pet? And you did, what was it? And, and uh, I think it was four boys and one girl. And... Uh, it was just so nice, and I guess they they, they baked they baked some of from my videos. Isn't that special? Because I know long ago, um, probably a month or more ago, I, I did an interview with Larsh Sudbury, Daryl Marsh, uh, formerly from this area, had made arrangements for me to do that, and uh, Kitty from Sudbury, Larsh group. I hope you're feeling good. She wasn't feeling so good this week. And uh, so I hope you're home and feeling healthy. Just a, a sweetheart, smiling all the time. So that's a, a, a very special group of people. Love them. And uh, I would be very remiss if I didn't talk about last Sunday. Without crying, I'm awful soft-hearted, I can't tell you, I'm just overwhelmed, overwhelmed and humbled and truly blessed to uh, experience the giving of the people that sent money. Now I know I put on there a couple of days ago or three days ago or something $8,700 which was incredible and uh, because it came into my personal bank account I had to send it to Rochelle the mom for little Russell uh, with my daily limit so my daily limit in my bank is $2,000 I sent her $2,000 on Monday. I sent her two thousand on Tuesday. I sent her two thousand on Wednesday. I sent her two thousand on Thursday, and I sent her two thousand on Friday. Uh, and that made ten thousand. Ten thousand dollars. And I mean, the family. I was talking to Rochelle by text just moments ago. Actually, she sent me a sweet picture of little Russell taken before the accident, of course, and I'm going to be posting that 
later. And uh, her and Trevor, the parents, are just just humbled and just so thankful. And it will go a long way in helping them deal with all of the trips that they will have to take. So, thank you. And there is still dribs and drabs coming. So, uh, just uh, a huge thank you to all of you for, for that. It's, uh, it's very much appreciated. Okay, I think we're good. So we're gonna just fold that in. Beautiful. Now, on I uh, just back to those donations for a minute. There's a uh, there's a couple of people that sent me donations via another method, like um, Zella or something like that, and it's that's from um, out of the U.S. and we can't deal with that in Canada. I couldn't download the app to accept the money, but I certainly appreciate uh, you sending the money, and I hope you you get it back. So, um, sorry about that. Anyway, uh, here are my pans, and there are three of them. One, the inside measurement is not nine by five. I, could, I don't know how tall it is, but three inches tall. And uh, these two are like, four and a half by eight and a half, the inside measurement. Whatever you have, use whatever you have and, you know, just as long as you don't fill it full, you know, like three quarters full or something like that, that should be just fine. And as per usual, I'm going to be using um, a little spray on the ends and I'm going to be putting parchment paper in each one. It's just the best thing because nothing's going to stick to the bottom, okay? So I'm going to do that with you. Put it in and drape it like that. Trust me, there's nothing better. Actually, I think I will trim that up a little bit because you don't want it so that it's there. And it's great to have them draped over the side because then you can just lift it out of the pan. And you know what? Just eyeball how much you're putting in. Try to divide it equally. I'm just gonna. I left some in there. A little, a little bit. 
in the, that's left there just to see how I am. I need more in this second one. about an inch and a half left to the top on those both of those this one is not going to be as high maybe I should steal some out of the other anyway I'll check that one that might be done earlier and uh, we're going to put them in the oven for an hour or you may want to ch check them about we'll come back anyway 10 minutes so right now we're going to put them in the oven and set the timer for one hour, but 10 minutes before that, I'm going to come back online. So in 50 minutes, I'm gonna come back online and we're going to make the, um, the glaze for the top. And I'll be testing um, the doneness of the, of the three loaves with my cake tester. If you have a toothpick or whatever you, you have to test, um, just make sure, because you don't want them to get overdone. Now, when I made them on Tuesday in my oven in 350, I did the whole hour, and but I think I, sh I would have taken them out five minutes before because they were nicely browned around the edges. And if you like that, that's fine too. And uh, I guess I made them on Tuesday or Wednesday, I'm not sure, but um, they were... Uh, uh, they were lovely. I, I enjoyed it. And there's so many good cooks out there. Um, th there was one lady that said she makes beautiful lemon loaf, the recipe that she has just now. But uh, And it takes sour cream. And I'm thinking, ooh, that sounds so good and so moist and whatever. And I was dying to just uh, to give that a try too, but I'm not good at improvising. But even, you know, with the milk the cup and a half of milk you know maybe buttermilk would be just the same idea make it nice and moist so not brave enough to try that on live TV and it turned not turn out so well but uh, but this is the recipe that Janelle gave me and uh, we'll just we'll go from there so people I'm going to stop streaming right now I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'll see you back here in 50 minutes okay take care Hi, I'm back. <laughs> okay, I have uh, just about 10 minutes left, but you know the, the loaf that has about 10 minutes left in it, but the one that had the least in it, it was the larger pan. I'm actually going to take that out right now. And because uh, it is ready, I'm just going to set it there for a minute. Um, but I, I, want to, I, I want to address a couple of things. Fred, yes, I did lick the bowl. <laughs> anyway, I first of all want to say welcome back. And Sandy Parker and anyone else out there, Janelle and Cameron's music is available for download on iTunes. I just download uh, on iTunes and my favorite CDs of all the Celtic world artists, I have them. Um, all down my loaded on my computer and uh, they, I just have them shuffling and, and they play and to, that's this album of Janelle's is um, Glencoe Station I think it's amazing it's just so nice it just warms my heart every time I hear it because of everything that he's done um, hi to Patty Noel Morgan in uh, Taunton Massachusetts 
and all of the good people that are joining from other countries, it's, it's, a, it's amazing for me. I just posted a picture of we Russell, and Russell, um, whom $10,000 was um, raised for, that picture was taken just days or a couple weeks before the actual accident uh, dog bite. So uh, he's so precious, and he's still precious, and he's even more precious. Um, and I don't, somebody else asked about Tupperware Bowl. I don't know who their an agent uh, is uh, locally. Uh, certainly someone can write me if they're around or, or I can put a link on my page if it's someone that I know. Hi to Donald and Fee McKenzie from the Isle of Canna, Scotland. Beautiful couple. They were here for breakfast one morning. She was doing a presentation in Mawu and a uh, beautiful singer as well. But lovely to hear that you're tuning in. Thank you very much. And uh, I love you both. And big hello from Cape Breton. And uh, you know, people from Labrador checking in. Hi there. Just I, I never get to read the comments until day, days after because it's, so busy and then on Monday I take an online course so it's like Tuesday and then I'm rushing to try to get the ingredients and for what I'm baking so uh, then I kind of get to the messages and oh uh, today I just sat down and I, and I read the most beautiful one that came actually brought me to tears in my seat and that was from Angela Angela Cameron Janelle and Cameron's wife she was watching I just it touched my heart to know that um, it is special for you to hear him uh, being shared here by myself and uh, just know that no matter how long he is gone, we will always love him and uh, he did so much. I've got, I have to tell you a funny story, Angela. Anybody else out there, this uh, Janelle was doing some school shows around here years ago. Our son, Gordy, who's now 41, uh, when he was like seven or eight, Janelle was at uh, the school in Port Hood, and he played his heart out for the children, and they loved it. And afterwards, he sat and, and you know, let them all come up, and if they wanted his autograph and whatever. And just to, to tell you a little bit, locally, we would go, uh, I was a step dance teacher, and a step dance performer in my younger days and then a teacher and then taught all our children, seven kids, to step dance. So all the local concerts, usually in the summertime, we would go and we would step dance as family from mom right down to the two-year-old and the little ones were catching on, but you know, they were, they were learning. So you had to kind of keep it basic. And uh, so Gordy was one of those. And and we were, they would introduce us uh, either as Mary Janet McDonald and family or the McDonald family dancers. So this particular day, Janelle was at the Port Hood Consolidated School. Kids were lining up to have autographs and Gordy went over to get his autograph. And uh, you know, he, he, was a, he was a comical little fellow. He, he wasn't shy by any means. And Janelle said, now who, who would this be? Who am I writing this to? And Gordy said, you mean you don't know who I am? I'm one of the McDonald family dancers. <laughs> you imagine world-renowned Janelle and Cameron going to recognize our little boy. It was just so cute. In, in his world, he was just as big as a, a star as Janelle. And I just thought I had to mention that when I saw Angela's post. So thank you, Angela, for tuning in. Yes, we will always love him. And yes, anybody, there's, I think there's at least three albums on iTunes that are downloadable. I don't know where to get the hard CDs anymore, but I have them, but they're stocked away somewhere. And uh, my, uh, our daughter's cookbook that they did way back then, no, we didn't do any more copies. That's out of print, and uh, but it was it was great fun. Uh, Paula Barton, I hope you get better. I hear you put your back out when you were going to bake with us today, so I hope you get better soon. I mentioned uh, something I was going to get from my daughter, 
and I probably didn't mention it. I, I knew what I was saying up here, but I probably never said it. It was spatulas, uh, the really good spatulas that Pampered Chef offered. So that's just clarification on that. Um, other than that, there was a, there was a, a, a viewer there from uh, Utah, and of course I always have a story. <laughs> but Utah brings back very special memories for me. Back in the day, I don't know if it was in 2000 or whatever, but I used to I used to travel many many places to teach Cape Breton style step dancing, and uh, went and was teaching in California many many times, and there was a family there that uh, were from Utah, and uh, the big niece, and wonderfully talented children there, and they still perform, I, I know. But they were, guess what, very good friends with Robert Redford. And you know that Robert Redford has, um, is it the Sundance Festival site in Utah somewhere? But anyway, uh, the big niece, Robert Redford, I was going to say Robert, <laughs> Robert gave them that uh, site to do a workshop. Uh, so they asked myself and Buddy McMaster to go down and uh, Barbara McGowan, formerly uh, connected to here, lives in California, uh, to do uh, workshops in piano and fiddle and step dance. And we spent the whole weekend there at his uh, Sundance Festival place and just stayed in the cottage, beautiful place, and just roaming the grounds and just a lovely place. So thank you for tuning in from Utah. That's amazing. And uh, I have, do have very nice memories from there. So uh, uh, one other little um, tip that someone gave me, and I should have mentioned that when I was doing the ride, uh, one of the ladies mentioned, I should mention, uh, to, to not uh, take the, uh, the white off, off the lemon. Don't, don't uh, you know, zest that because that's, that is bitter. And just get the yellow peel, the, the rind, that, that will be fine. Okay, now this is going to be cooked and I talk too much. We're going to do the next part because you want to get it on there while the loaf is hot. Okay? So... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if you can see this. I'll pull this camera back. All right. So I'm going to cut each one of them, each one of the lemons in half. And there'll be lots of seeds in, in the yours. Okay. I'm going to test this right now. I have a couple of, of, of testers. Thin, thin one, a little bit thicker one, or the toothpick, whatever you have. And somebody also said that they butter and and uh, flour their loaf pans. Look, girl, if you've been doing that and it works for you, that is wonderful. I have had bad experiences where things don't come out of the pan for me sometimes. So that's why I use the parchment paper. And yes, they do come out lovely and brown. The parchment paper doesn't interfere with the brownness. And, and then you won't have that flour residue on the outside of the loaf. Just my two cents. Again, I'm not a, by any means, a perfectionist. So I'm just going to check through the down the middle. Yep, they're great. They're just great. So if you can see this, I think you can. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the loaves out and see. They're plenty brown. Doesn't take away from the brownness at all. I'm just going to lay them on a parchment paper that I put on a cookie sheet because you have to pour the glaze over it and just let it sit there, okay? Hot, 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 hot. Careful you don't burn yourself. And 
see the smaller loaves, they came out lovely and brown as well. Perfect. Now it doesn't take very long to make the glaze. And I uh, originally had my daughter uh, post the recipe and uh, I actually only had a half a cup of sugar, but that was wrong. If anybody had read it and wrote it down in the first part, it's one and a half cups of sugar and the, and the juice of three lemons, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna put the sugar in now. So one and a half cups, put it in a saucepan. These are half cup measures. Okay, we'll have that all ready. And I'm just going to put these on this little dollar store juicer, okay? And I'm just going to squeeze it down like that, so and the juice will run through into the uh, into the bowl. So basically, for any new people, that's how much you you dig it in there. I don't know how much juice three lemons will make, but I bet you it's, I should have measured that the other day, but it's probably about a half a cup, maybe. So basically I'm going to just add the juice and um, bring it to a boil and boil for maybe Two minutes. I think that's what it says. One more. Perfect. Now this little gadget will gather up any of the seeds. I don't know if that's a half a cup. Anyway, pour that in. Turn your burner on medium. Turn your oven off, which I didn't do. Just all you do is just stir it around and right, really you're just stirring it until you can't really feel the sugar base. It's just the sugar is just melting, okay? After, after I finish this, we're invited over to Mitchell's for supper. And I volunteered to make the dessert. And I am making, um, it's a recipe I actually found online and it looked so good. The base is brownies, uh, you know, a homemade brownie recipe. And the top has, it's like a, like a cheesecake topping. And you put some chocolate in and you swirl it around and it's like marbly. Oh my God, it's, it looks delicious. I hope it tastes as good as it looks. I, I think I said bring this to a boil, but I don't even know. I better check Janelle's recipe here and make sure. Cook over medium heat for about two minutes or until the sugar is completely dissolved. And then pour the hot lemon glaze over the hot loaves and let stand for about an hour or until cooled. Now, 
what I do, what, what I did is I um, poured the, the lemon glaze over the, the loaves and left them to cool. And then, because um, as you can imagine, the, the cookie sheet will be will be all full of the, the lemon glaze down underneath, whatever. So I just cut a piece of foil wrap and wrap them in foil wrap when when they're completely cool. You don't you don't never want to wrap anything that's that's hot like that, and uh, that's that's still hot and you know or still warm because it will be sweaty, and. Uh, then I put a plastic bag over the whole thing and uh, I just refrigerated them and they were fine until I gave them away the, the next day. Now, um, um, you could absolutely freeze them in the same way. You know, what's really, I used to, I, I used to be a caregiver and, uh, what you do is you you'd freeze, um, I, it was banana bread I'm talking about, I would cut off a piece and, and then slice it and keep it in the fridge a few slices at a time and uh, the rest I would keep in the freezer. But my daughter Krista had a good suggestion there, you know, slice it all, put it back together, put it in the freezer and then you can just pick out what you want. So I think that's great. Okay, to me. I'm not feeling any any sugar, sandy sugar. I think it's perfect. Oh gosh, I gotta put my tea on. I have to have a cup of tea. Two tea bags. Boiling water. So about mix. And I put the stove on low. Push it back. It'll be just great in five minutes. Okay. Let's see if I can bring you closer to the loaves. Please forgive me. Just I'll actually oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs>
I'm going to pull you a little closer to me. Okay, we're done. That was pretty simple, really, but that's a, that's a really great recipe. So, thank you, Janelle, and, and thank you, Angela, for, for popping by. That means so much. Um, it was great. He was said he had such beautiful penmanship. I wish I could show it to you, but uh, it, it'll be backwards when you see it. But, I mean, such beautiful penmanship. They just don't teach, you know, that anymore, you know. It's 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 too bad, but it's a great it was a great skill. And he said, "This was he wrote this October the 9th of ninety six. Kelly and Krista, I know I'm late, late in replying, but I hope this will be okay for your volume two. By the way, I was away for most of April and May, and indeed most of the summer promoting my Glencoe Station album. Oh, I didn't even realize that. And that's the album I'm playing. Awesome." In any case, it is a wonderful project, and I hope all your efforts were realized. Kindest regards, Janelle and Cameron. Janelle's mom used to come to uh, our house all the time. Uh, Mama, uh, who raised me, was born in 1902, and they'd probably be of similar age, and there was a, a great following of these ladies that would come and, and visit and... Uh, that sit all around the, the room and they would sing Gaelic songs and sing English songs and Irish songs and Scottish songs and uh, they just they just loved to get together and these were hard working women um, of the day, you know, like doing the laundry on a ringer washer and hanging it out to dry and ironing everything. Um, anyway, that was then, and this is now, and I remember them fondly, but, but, uh, she was a lovely, lovely lady, his, uh, his mother, and I remember her well. I can remember looking down through the, the, uh, the vent that allowed the heat to come upstairs, and, and I'd be sent to bed, but I'd be sneaking down and sitting on the stairs. Wow, the parties were happening. Um, oh, a quick message here from um, Leon Egan, or Egar. Oh, gosh, I can't make out her writing, but I, I don't have her envelope here. Uh, she's from New Brunswick. She, she ordered aprons, and I am going to... Um, send a letter out tomorrow to you or the next day, probably on Tuesday because I'm in an online course on Mondays. And she's from Rexton, New Brunswick. She talked of one time being in Port Hood and taking her mother here, visiting relatives. But I have news for you. My brother is a genealogist, you know, on his own time, not professionally, but he might as well be. And any questions I have, I go to him. And I was, I was giving him some information that you had put in your in the card that you sent me. And um, you and I are related, like second and third cousins. It's crazy. So I'm going to, I have the family, not the whole family tree, but I have a lot of that information that I'm going to be sharing with you. But I just thought that was so cool. And if it hadn't been for Toons and Wooden Spoons and COVID, I wouldn't know that. And you wouldn't know that. So I'm pretty pretty excited about that. I love finding relatives. So that's awesome. Um, what else was I wanting to tell you before I let you go? Let me just, this, 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 this lemon loaf is the one I made on um, Tuesday or Wednesday. I think it was, might have been Wednesday, but it's still nice and moist. That's, um, I obviously didn't cut the new loaf, but I still had about this much left. Mm, it's really good. It's really good. By chance, these little napkins I had to use it, but I didn't realize they have lemons on them. Superstore. 
I'm going to have a little strupaka tea. Oh, that's a good color from the tea. Just perfect. Anyway, so, you know, I've made the decision that I'm going to keep on doing this on Sundays, even after COVID, even in the summertime. We can all watch it on the replay or whatever. And if I really had to be somewhere and I wasn't going to be available on any Sunday, I can always do a video and post it on Sunday and would be similar but not exactly the same. But it would, you, I know you guys would all understand that. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really loving this. And uh, even with my incompetence <laughs> with technology, but what the heck, we're all doing this together. Um, I want to mention something that a lady wrote about, and I didn't mention, I don't mention her name because I actually didn't write it down and I'll never find the, the conversation again. But she was telling me, you know, any opportunity I get to, to give a safety tip to do that, and this particular tip came from her for first-hand knowledge. And it's about, you know, the whole thing about barbecue bristles, that the brushes, that those wiry brushes that we use on, on barbecues to clean them. Well, back about a, maybe two summers ago, we kind of moved away from that, just given the warnings about them. Um, we moved to a wooden one. It was actually uh, given to us, and so we used that, or wrapped up, you know, balled up foil wrap will do an equally good job. Throw those bristle brushes in the garbage now. Um, this lady's daughter, uh, after a barbecue, got one stuck in her throat. And she's had more than one surgery. And you know what? That bristle is still in there. Can you imagine the delicate spot that it's in? And uh, they, they just... They, they couldn't get it and it's still there and for now the, she lives with that I don't know the the ins and the outs of it but that's just one example and how many more are there so please if you're listening and you have one of those darn things please uh, on for this mother's uh, benefit uh, or everybody's benefit but because she mentioned that to me isn't it important to heed that uh, so that it doesn't happen to somebody else? So I really wanted to mention to mention that. Uh, next week, next Sunday, we're going to be making German apple cake. Now, German apple cake, it is the most delicious dessert. It's got raisins in it, but uh, you could probably make it without the raisins if you weren't a raisin fan uh of course it just adds to it but um you're you're going to, this recipe was in the the recipe book that the twins did that time and i wanted to uh, i know it's all backwards that's just the way it uh films uh, when it gets on youtube my daughter is able to flip it so that it's you'll see the the proper writing but anyway um this is from the Rankin family in Mabu, and, and their little quote with the recipe was, birthdays wouldn't be complete without a special cake, and this one certainly fits the bill at the Rankin home. And uh, basically, the cake part, it's, it takes three eggs and a cup of oil and white sugar, brown sugar, flour, cinnamon, vanilla, baking soda, salt, um, raisins, um, a cup of raisins. I just use the regular Thompson raisins. I think it's better with the, the sticky raisins. We used to call them sticky raisins. They were big and fat raisins, but you can't find them anymore. But the big thing is you need four cups of, of uh, apples. And that's... Um, the Use the Granny Smith ones, the green ones, because they kind of hold their shape. Um, just a minute, I'm going to get my, my elm tree recipe box because I'm, I put the, re I have the recipe in on a card in here. Uh, I'll take my desserts out of here. 
and I'll find that. I should have had this ready. Sorry, people. There it is. So four cups of wedged, peeled Granny Smith apples. It's it's about three large uh, size um, Granny Smith apples or four small ones. That's what I have on here. And, um, and that's just for the cake part. And then there's a topping. It's, it's, you have the whole big, the eight ounces of Philadelphia cream cheese and uh, a little butter, a little vanilla and two cups of icing sugar. And you're gonna be putting that on the top after the cake is done and putting it back in the oven. And uh, you're just letting that caramelize for, for a while. It's really delicious. And uh, so those, are the, I'll, be, I'll be posting a picture of the recipe um, and um, the ingredients Tuesday or Wednesday, more like Wednesday, because Monday I'm in class and on Tuesday I usually make what I'm gonna make so that I can take a picture and show it to you and then I'll post that either Tuesday night or on Wednesday. So that's that. And I was telling you last week about my uh, my brother finding my mother's cookbook and I like she died in 1955 and this scribbler he had in a box that was given to him by our aunt and uh, you know just didn't know that if it was there but but he brought it out to me he lives in model he brought it out to me but just just look at at these pages just just so old and I think and, and I write like her and my handwriting isn't that amazing and uh, my my son and daughter actually uh, they were in the Celtic Colors International Festival one time singing the kids were and they wrote a song called carry on it's actually I think it's on YouTube it might be under the the, the kids had have a a, a band now and again they, they get together as a band but n not very often the band is called Company Road and Carry On is the name of the uh, of the song and the uh, intro into the song uh, on YouTube it's lengthy because my son Brennan explains um uh, uh, it just explains about the song and um, it's pretty special but in it one of the lines is that uh, about her handwriting about how handwriting is the same even though I didn't know her because I was three when she died so that's that's just this is just gives me goosebumps and gave my sister goosebumps and I will find a recipe in here uh, that I will be making for the next two weeks that's taken care of, next week is the German apple cake, and the weekend after that is going to be bread pudding, and I'm going to be on location at a beautiful villa uh, in uh, near Inverness, and uh, more about that next week. And But anyway, I, uh, I'm i going to be typing up these recipes because they're blotted and, and um, the, 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 the ink is running here and there, but... I'll, I'll figure it out and just preserve it. I want to have it in, in, in print, but we'll preserve this in some way. But anyway, it's a beautiful thing when you leave, uh, you leave special memories to your children and maybe not even realizing, but she certainly left many things knowing she was going to pass away. So this is very, very special. Well, folks, I believe that's it for another week and this is so fun and thank you for your kindness thank you for all the support there's great things happening and um you know we'll just carry on and and bake with one another and i think that's extra special and thank you all for those who send me recipes and ideas and i'm just i'm like i said i'm i'm, I'm no expert at any of this i just make what i make and uh love sharing that with you 
I'm not one of those that doesn't like to share their recipes with, with anyone. I just, you want a recipe, I'll give it to you if I have it. So have a wonderful week and um, love everybody. And I love you too. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Mary Janet here. Thanks so much for watching. I would love if you would hit subscribe, please. And if you'd like to order an apron, you can go to tunesandwoodenspoons.com. Uh, the link is down there in the description. So thanks so much and happy baking.